going back to the whole way, like where where if you can piss and from there, it does say you can live up to a week in an extra queen. Oh wow! <laughs> it does. The X queen is equipped with air, water, food, and life processes support equipment that are all packed into this area behind the pilot seat. Well, I mean, if you look at R two, he's got a lot of storage space. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, R two gets thirsty. He just pops the lid off. Poor R two. No wonder R two so grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. You found the lost holocron, an ancient artifact of lore and legends from a galaxy far, far away. Each transmission of the Lost Holocron, you will join an episodic discussion of media from the Star Wars universe. We will be your guides. Tim? Hi, everyone. Kyle? Hiya. Scott? Hey. And I'm Stuart. We will be covering material up to and including Chapter 12 of Air to the Empire. So, Kyle, what happened so far? Ah, thank you for asking. Well, after two foiled kidnappings on diplomatic missions, Leia Organa Solo and Han Solo suspect a leak inside the New Republic government. They head to the Athega system to find Lando to get his help outside New Republic jurisdiction. Meanwhile, Luke Skywalker has been training Leia to be the first of the new generation of Jedi, while struggling with self-doubt as the teacher needed, as the teacher needed to rebuild the order. On a hunch, he travels to Dagobah, hoping to find something left behind by Master Yoda. Ultimately disappointed, Luke recovers a nondescript gadget from the Dark Side Cave, but suspects Lando can help with deciphering the secret written within. Meanwhile, Grand Admiral's Thrawn schemes are coming to a head, as he allied himself with Master Jer- Jerus Sabayoth, clone and Dark Jedi. Captain Pelion devises a plan to disseminate that might lure Luke to Sabayoth instead of sending more Nagori to capture him. Finally, Mar Jade has apprentice to the smuggler Talon card as they play cat and mouse to tease information out of each other. Tim, what's going on in this chapter? Well, of the many plot threads going on in this story, this one is focusing on Han and Leia. The Millennium Falcon arrives in the Athega system with Han and Leia looking to meet with Lando. Luke arrives at just the right time for them to take the slow sublight trip to the inner system, since neither the Falcon nor Luke's X-Wing have slave circuits needed to precisely coordinate inbound ships with their shielding escort. Once at Nikon, though, the Empire shows up suddenly. Bad timing, or are they being tracked? I think they're being tracked. How about you guys? <laughs> I don't know. I... I... I don't think so. I think it's just a really strange coincidence, but it does kind of feel a little too convenient. Yeah. I, I feel like it's a little bit of the, the force works in mysterious ways, because as I mentioned at the end of the last recording, the Athega system was mentioned by Thrawn as a place that they wanted to go before it's come up that Han and Leia and Luke are trying to find Lando here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. I think as Thrawn mer- works in mysterious ways, personally. <laughs> <laughs> or Zahn works in mysterious ways. Do you think he's bugged the Falcon, or...? That's a very good question. Maybe he left the device. Maybe the device is a tracking device. I don't know. Maybe he has spies. Luke's, Luke's device? Luke's device, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, who, who knows, honestly. I, I was thinking. But I believe Thrawn would find a way. Hmm. I, I was thinking Maybe. about it this chapter, and I know Thrawn's supposed to be incredibly intelligent. Is I wonder if he thinks this is worth it. He's putting a lot of effort into this. I mean, I feel like he could... <laughs> I don't know. I guess he's just super into the Empire then, right? Like, if he's so yeah. intelligent, he, he... If he wanted to think of something better to do, clearly he mm-hmm. thinks this is the best option. Right. Hmm. So um, what I feel if, uh, like I might have mentioned before, but like Thrawn's plans have dual and uh, I'm not sure what triple might be in with those words, dual or triple meanings behind them. Because as with the raid on, on the Fash, he was using that both as a testing ground for Sabaoth. He was using it to enforce the chain of command He was using it to also draw out the New Republic away from Sluis Van, that we know is his next target, almost. 
So mm-hmm. it's not like anything that he does has multiple layers to it, and he also has contingencies for those. So I don't feel like he does... I feel like he gets a lot of return for all of the operations that he puts out because it's not just one reward. It's three rewards or five rewards. Or... He's a 5D chess player. Yeah. He's getting yeah. multiple dividends from his investment. Yeah. He's got a well-diversified yeah. portfolio. <laughs> 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 yeah. I don't know about you guys, but Nikon is such a cool planet concept. <laughs> mm. I really, really liked it. It, um, have you guys seen the movie Sunshine? No. No. It um it's a sci-fi movie from 2007 with Killian Murphy, Chris Evans, Michelle Yeoh, Mark Strong. It's really freaking awesome. It's I mean it's just about like a trip to of astronauts going to the sun. There are multiple sequences throughout it where they need to be shielded from the sun so they themselves Is that the don't one where they have up. to like restart mm. like, and this reminded sun. me a lot of that with how close the sun is for them and so yeah yeah that's what it is yeah (laughs) (laughs) hold on what what was their uh what was their uh concept for reigniting the sun uh probably something to do with global warming or Uh climate change yeah (laughs) i don't know it's been a bit since i've seen the movie so i don't remember that much (laughs) i just i just remember really tense sequences where like a little bit of sun will get through and someone will start like burning up Mm mm-hmm so yeah, Sunshine's a really cool movie, and this um, chapter really made me think of it. Mm. Yeah. Is that the one where they had to go reignite the sun? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then it suddenly becomes a slasher movie, and people didn't like that. I, <laughs> I was okay that. with it, but <laughs> yeah. <know> that. <laughs> <laughs> this did not go that route, as far uh, as we know. We'll as far as we out. know, yeah, yeah. But yeah. There's always the next chapter. R2 could have lost it during the 10 hour ride, uh-huh. <laughs> which is insane. 10 yeah, hours was... in an X-Wing. Oh yeah. For Luke, that would have been, and he just like had jumped straight in there from his dark side experience. Yeah. So he was covered in sweat. Does he have a way to use the restroom in there? Huh. He must do. Right. I mean, isn't that what all the hoses are like on the, on the X-Wing pilot suit are? Like all the hoses and everything, like you got the <laughs> breathing hose. more for oxygen. But then, uh-huh. yeah, but then, like, don't you have like some going, like you know, underneath the the crotchal region? We don't piss where we breathe, Scott. <laughs> Look, they put technology. Maybe you do in the way. in the, in Star Wars. You know, I don't know. <laughs> it could be like the the Fremen's uh, recycled suits. The what are the suits called, Scott? The still suit. Yeah, maybe still suit. Even then, can you imagine how cramped he must be? Yeah. Oh my God. Maybe he has, like, taking a nap much, at some how point. How much legroom do they have? Because I, I imagine they don't need to use their feet. Do they have legroom down there? Mm. Is he doing the have, splits? Does he have like pedals? Let's find a cross section right now. Uh, <laughs> oh, <those laughs> I maybe based first. on the based on the Lego model that I had, he had plenty of foot room. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I, I know I wasn't a <laughs> like I wasn't a big fan of Star Wars when I was younger. I did love those cross section books. Mm, you know. yeah those are cool but i mean one of those hoses could be hooked up to to r2 and then like he's just like the waste recycler you know maybe that's the real reason why they have to have like an r2 unit on the x-wings and stuff because it's like waste recycling <laughs> and then they just like they so let him down and then they hook him up to like the gray water like the the black water drainage you know <laughs> He's the porta potty. R2 is just the porta potty. I sent a cross section to you guys. Oh, yeah. See, right here in this cross section, is he, it says P2 what? right here. Yeah. It's, it what? It does? No, I'm joking. <laughs> okay. I was like, I was, I was looking through it for something like that. And I was like, whoa, did he find it? <laughs> I mean, his legs don't look like they're in the worst spot. It does look like he has some pedals, though. What do the pedals do? The accelerator and the brake, right? Does he have a clutch? It's a five or six speed manual. They're the pitch and roll control pedals. <laughs> pitch and uh, roll. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Says it right there, Kyle. <laughs> oh, my bad. I don't think Kyle's looking at the actual thing. He's just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> I posted the link for a reason. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm still looking through my own book. Oh, yeah. He's pretty reclined there. 
Well, what's hilarious is he does have pedals. <laughs> does he have like massage foot feature on the seat too? Like heated seat? Yeah, I mean, you could look. It looks as, it looks like about as comfortable as like a one of those like cheap beach chairs that like, like a, a chase lounge or something. <laughs> you can add a, like add a round deck chair at chase lounge. Chase lounge. I I take a nap on that. <laughs> Ten hour nap. I guess also what what is he wearing in this? He's wearing his um pilot suit, flight suit probably. Is he wearing his like X wing getup? Is he wearing his like stupid little black outfit? <laughs> He's got to have his breathing mask and his. It said something about a tunic in the last one. Was he actually flying with that, or did he actually have his suit on? I mean, he had to have flown with it in The Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like, X-Wings have hyperdrives, so they have to be as comfortable as however long your hyperdrive flight is. And hyperdrive, uh, hyperspace can take, hyperspace travel can take, you know, depending how far you're going, days. Right. Even though it's, you know, faster than light, it can still take forever. Hmm. Yeah. So I wouldn't want to be in that for 10 hours. Right. I'd rather be in the Falcon. <laughs> the Falcon is very cushy compared to this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can at least get up and walk around. Although going back to what uh, Kyle asked about massage, I would have imagined that the chair is like, has some sort of like movement. Cause if you've got to sit in that thing for a long time, you wouldn't want to get like compression sores or something. So there would be something there to oh, like, yeah mix up all the pressures across your skin well i imagine also i mean it's it's a fighter it's not like a freighter or anything so they're probably not making a 10-hour trip on the regular Mm, probably yeah that might be one of their like yeah maximum i I don't know i'd say a couple of days is probably the maximum flight range of a of an x-wing yeah but i mean in most cases they would probably just use the hyperdrive as well yeah right there is a quote unquote cargo bay here, so maybe that's where it's all going. <laughs> what, uh, all the all the black water, the waste. putting junk in the trunk. <laughs> it is in a convenient location to wear his asses. Convenient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Nikon seems to be like a, a heavy Mercury kind of planet, mm-hmm. it seems, and the contraption that they've got is a bunch of ATATs strapped <laughs> yeah. together with a giant city on its back. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. They said like what 50 ATATs? It sounded like it was the Imperial Dreadnought strapped on its back. The Superstar oh. Destroyer from Return of the Jedi. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. It said it was like half the size of a oh no, that was the um the shield ship that they were hitching the ride, but it was half the size of a uh, Star Destroyer. And then I love it. <laughs> yeah. It's so quirky. They just walk around on the planet mining. <laughs> yeah. I like that the, the shield ship is a modified B Wing. Mm-hmm. A modified B Wing? Yeah. Wasn't that their um no no the escort was a was a B Wing. So that's they, what he's oh, talking I'm about. Sorry. They were the I'm patrollers. Sorry, yeah. Oh. And okay. then the shield ship is something else entirely. Oh, oh okay. Like this Love huge that. umbrella thing that had like a tiny little tugboat in the center. Right. But the B-Wings are security. I'm sorry, real quick. Just going back to the whole way, like where, where if you can piss and from there. It does say you can <laughs> live up to a week in an extra wing. Oh, oh wow. It does? Right, yeah. If you, in, that, in that gift you sent me. Well, I mean, if you look at R2, he's kind of, he's got a lot of storage space in there. It says independent operation. <laughs> the X-Wing is equipped with life support system sufficient for one week in space, air, water, food and life processes support equipment that are all packed into this uh, area behind the pilot seat. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I believe those little blue containers, that's where his piss and is going. <laughs> <laughs> I still like my R2 theory, though. <laughs> that's the real reason they need an R2 unit. I mean, R2 gets thirsty. Yeah, you can recycle it. You know, it's like it's like Back to the Future. You know, at the end when he's like throwing garbage in the back of it. You know, maybe that's just how. Maybe that's actually how R two units are powered. You know, they just exactly. they just use the yeah exactly. You just pop the lid off, fusion or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but also, yes, I I do love the dreadnought <laughs> being carried by like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is roped together. I've got the, I've got the quote here. It is. The old dreadnought cruiser on top, 
the 40 captured Imperial AT-ATs underneath, carrying it across the ground. Mm -hmm. The shuttles and pilot vehicles moving around and in front of it. They don't have 40 crews all walking in sync in those, do they? No, I I think think they're probably just... They're probably just on auto, autopilot, just push a button, just cruise control, you know? It's like I imagine there's a yeah. central command that they're all linked to that's yeah. coordinating their steps. So in this chapter, they introduce the idea of a slave circuit, which what I'm guessing is it's some sort of coordination uh, programming that allows ships to move in sync with each other because that's what it, why they couldn't take... They had to take the sublight. Uh, yeah. route the, the 10 hour trip so instead if you sync up the the computers the, the nav computers then using the slave circuits they could make the jump and be like precisely where they need to be in order to be shielding them right mm. outside the planet and then i'm guessing that the ATATs in this are slaved together in some way uh yeah then that's the other, you know, another thing is that Han and Chewie are talking back and forth like, we ain't going to let somebody take over our ship. We don't have a slave circuit on this thing. No. Yeah. Speaking of which, Chewie talking? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, we got something. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Finally happened. Finally. But then later he gets mentioned as the co-pilot. And I was like, come on, man. You were doing so well. How, stop, how dare stop, you stop disrespecting chewy like that he's not the we all know <laughs> we all know that chewy is actually the pet owner and han is his dog yes we do <laughs> <laughs> who is like han solo is the captain he's the yeah. captain but is he also the pilot or is chewy the pilot i would say Chewie's the pilot basically i i feel like chewy pilots more often or was piloting more often as it went on Mm. I think Han likes to think he can pilot really well, and he can, but <laughs> I think Chewie's more consistent than Han. <laughs> right. I also heard yeah. a really cool fan theory a long time ago that um, Chewie was actually an early rebellion agent planted by the by the rebellion to run into Han, and um, this whole time Han just thinks he's running the show, but it's really Chewie. <laughs> interesting we don't get enough of Chewie's in a monologue to uh yeah. confirm or deny that though yeah yeah no <laughs> but yeah Chewie's definitely the engineer yeah but whether he's also the pilot or not because like when when it comes push comes I to show often I, flies it yeah we often see han at the controls when something's gone awry i imagine they've become pretty interchangeable like mm. they they're at the point where they know exactly who needs to take over when yeah and can work in tandem. Yeah, they're very in sync with one another. But exactly. It, it, yeah. yeah, I I get the feeling like, and also part of that that fan theory that I just mentioned was, um, it also says that the Millennium Falcon is actually Chewie's ship. Just Han thinks it's his. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> but on the blockchain, I, you can verify <laughs> that Chewie is the legal owner of that. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, they're so in tune with the ship you know and and it's like both of their baby you know it is yeah yeah but i mean it it's definitely one of the coolest ships in sci-fi mm. oh definitely yeah yeah and we get a new story of what the inspiration for its shape was every year yeah well yeah because <laughs> no one remembers they were just the ship, it, the ship itself is a character it has its own personality it, it's yeah. it's awesome it really really is yeah I should watch Solo. I haven't watched Solo yet. <laughs> yeah, you, you should. Then you would see how explicitly wrong that fan theory is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also heard this fan theory. So I, to give you context, I had copied and pasted this fan theory to my MySpace page. Oh. So it, it's that old. Yes, it's that old. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh-huh. That actually does help give a lot of context to it. <laughs> uh-huh. Right. <laughs> so kids... Back in the good old days of the internet when we just started. The, in- the interwebs. Yeah. Yes. We, we used to have to code to share things about our lives. Uh-huh. <laughs> Back when the only friend you needed was Tom. But you could actually put yeah. music on your page. You could put music on your homepage. Yeah. Back in the day. You can't do that on Facebook. Yeah. You can share it, but you can't, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the days where you had no security and <laughs> anybody just going into a website could infect your computer with 
malware. Yes. Oh yeah, those are great. <laughs> but beware, if somebody messages you on your MySpace page, they become your future ex-wife. Oh, it sounds like you're projecting that. <laughs> Unless it's Tom. <laughs> what if I want Tom to be my future ex-wife? <laughs> <laughs> Tom will do that for you. I think he will. <laughs> <laughs> that dependable. <laughs> uh, I'm a little surprised you know who Tom is, Tim. <laughs> I do, yeah. <laughs> I'm not that young. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Who is Tom? He, he was the founder. Oh, yeah. yeah. And whenever you signed up for MySpace, Tom was your friend. There was no one on MySpace who didn't have a friend. I don't yeah. think you. I don't think you had the option to unfriend Tom. <laughs> when civilization collapses, Tom will be there to weather us through the storm. <laughs> no, I, I think MySpace is yeah. gone. I don't think there's MySpace anymore. <laughs> no, Tom is still there. <laughs> <laughs> Tom is who we should send to meet the aliens, be the ambassador for the human race. Yep, yep, yep. He's the he's the only guy. Depends on who the aliens are. If it's the reptilians, I don't want it. <laughs> Maybe the greys or the tall whites. Who should we send for the reptilians? Oh, they're pretty violent. Mark Zuckerberg? Mike Tyson. He fits right in there. Anyway, speaking of <laughs> Chewie getting his first lines, we get <laughs> we get Lando's first lines as well. However, yes. we get Lando blocked. Before we can get Lando, <laughs> there's a giant invasion. I know. Why does he think we want action? <laughs> <laughs> Look, guys, all we want is some Lando, some hot chocolate. Colt 45. Colt 45. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So looking forward to seeing Lando for a while. wonder when he's going to come in. But now, uh, yeah. Yeah. I really hope nothing happens to his uh, operation, though, because... Yeah. They've tied together something that seems very precarious. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I, think, I think that thing is. I think I think all of their are about to get wrecked. Those those mole miners are looking pretty tasty right there. Yeah, oh. yeah. I think this is about to be a show of force that they have to run from. Yeah, quite possibly. Although uh, Luke's pretty handy in an X wing, so he is. Yeah, yeah. When he has an empty bladder. <laughs> well, actually, I guess it depends on why Thrawn is there because maybe he just wants to grab them and run because this is the third ambush they've had to try to capture these people it <laughs> just scoops yeah. them up and zips out I'm not sure it's a capture thing because Thrawn wanted mole miners and in this chapter uh, Han explains to Leia what a mole miner is as well so I think it's a resource raid Oh. oh, and that they just happen to be there? Yeah. That would make sense. And so, if we're going to... And so. Yeah, cutting back to <laughs> where the edit's <laughs> actually going to get in, <laughs> I think it makes a lot of sense that we believe that it's a trap or something because mm -hmm. that's Han's perspective and Leia's perspective so far. They've, they feel like yeah. they've been hounded and they might be bugged and they're trying to escape being bugged. And they're being very careful not to broadcast themselves on the, uh, to the whole system yes. and communication. Mm -hmm. So it makes a lot of sense that they believe that it's uh, uh, some sort of like shadow work at, at play. But I think it really is a case of um, just wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. Or right place, right time for Thrawn. Yeah. I do I do feel for sure that the next chapter is going to be from Thrawn's perspective. Or just I mean well, Empire perspective. Mm. Ooh. Mm. That would be really fun. I would enjoy that. Mm. <laughs> you know what would be really annoying though? Is that we jump to Mara Jade and Talon Card doing nothing again. Stop it right now, Stuart. I do not want that to happen. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. The book is being rewritten pages. as you speak. Let me flip my pages. <laughs> yeah. To me, these odds like, oh wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I hate I hate those books where it's like you make a very obvious setup to like put yourself in the middle of the action and like like you, you you said about the roller coaster going over the hill, then the author yeah. just cuts to something completely uninteresting. It's like I didn't even care that this was part of the book. Get back yeah. to the characters that I want to talk about. <laughs> yeah, right. 
I've had the experience, I can't remember which book it was though, that that would happen so frequently that when you actually get back to the chapter that you think you were, you were excited for, that it was, it was a whole like dummy play and mm. turns out that it was like a misunderstanding or like you get to this like high pinnacle of, of tension and then it's completely diffused every time you go back there and you're like, I don't want to talk about this character. Go, <laughs> go to the tension that you set up just now. Yeah. Looking at you, Twilight. <laughs> yeah. Hyperion did that a little bit. Yeah. But uh, yeah, occasionally, but it was okay. Still amazing books. It was a whole amazing series. But yes, I have high, high expectations for this. Did anyone else find it hilarious that they positively identified Luke by having 3PO speak to R2 over the cons? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep, that's him. <laughs> They're like a married couple just bickering back and forth at each other. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Although, like, doesn't that defeat the whole purpose of saying, hey, we're, this is Han and Leia, that... Anybody who knows C three PO and R two D two is like they're going to know that they are with Luke and Han and Leia. Yeah, right. Would they? Are droids that important? I mean, in this case, to a tactician yes. like Thrawn, but maybe yeah. they don't know that. Yeah, I just realized how how disappointing that Han and Leia were like. You know what? It's getting a little too intense here. Let's let's go the middle of nowhere and just like lay low for a minute. And as soon as they get there, it's just like, here's the, <laughs> yeah. the story. Right? <laughs> it's like yeah. a surprise. Man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'll have to edit that out. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I made the effect for that reason. I know. <laughs> like I say, this is the first unscripted episode of the Lost Hall. <laughs> this is the first uncensored Oh my God. <laughs> it is on our end anyway. <laughs> Although I, the reason that I think that Thrawn might be able to identify is, is, is he's studying all the art of the, the heroes of, of uh, what was it? The heroes of Endor that like in the background, he's just like, he sees mm, these blue and golden droids. They keep showing up. In all right. This, the golden like, God, <laughs> the golden yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that just so. like, he's finding them in the background of a bunch of memes and so it's like those people who, <laughs> who try or, to I identify people on the internet or in c3po's case he's the centerpiece and everyone else is the background <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's that guy on um on tiktok who can tell you how tall you are based on just like whatever's in your background <laughs> oh god that guy <laughs> <laughs> Thrawn is just that guy of like, well, right. I can cross reference all of these things just based on the things in the background of these these images that I'm getting of the <laughs> propaganda. Like, so yeah, maybe Leia should have thought better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but hey, it worked out. It was actually Luke. Yeah. Oh I, yeah. I guess I guess that could have been. That's what I didn't consider as the problem. I thought they weren't trying to. Uh, communicate with everybody else in the system. They were not trying to blow their cover, but rather get a positive ID on each other was, uh, I didn't think about it like that. Yeah, no, they, they were pretty feeling pretty shaken up from the decoy Falcon. Mm, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And I think Han at this point is still hard, finds it hard to believe that they found another YT 1300. Right. Yeah. yeah. And now they're able to deep fake, uh, Luke's voice. He's probably thinking to himself, wow, I wonder what kind of parts I can yeah. gallop off that thing. <laughs> Seems like the white, the Falcon always needs some kind of repairs. <laughs> Turns out there's just a little high-pitched mouse deep faking Luke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are those little mouse people that you uh, talk to in... Um... Lancel Republic 2. Oh, yeah. What are they called? No, it wasn't Weequay. No, the Weequays are the, um, uh, the rough skins. Right. Is it Jack Jack Car? Is the, is the bar, right? Yes, that's the bar. But I'm looking, I'm on Wikipedia and I'm at appearances and creatures. It doesn't seem like it's listed. Ah, it's Chadrafan. Chadrafan? I'm pretty sure it's a Chadra fan. Yeah. Hmm. Cool. There we go. Chadra fan was short, rodent-like humanoids, usually no more than one meter tall with a bat-like face, and they hailed from the watery planet of Chad. 
Was that the guy? Okay, so remember, I think it's A New Hope, where you're at, where we see the bar scene, and like one of them's like reaching for a drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The I think bat like face. In, in yes, right, right. I never That's made right. that connection. Yeah, it is. All right, so we got a cool planet. Got a big old sun shield. Got a lot, a lot of uh, lower back cramps for Luke. Yeah. <laughs> we got a city built on ATATs. Yes, a city built on ATATs. Yes, I thought that was really awesome. That's badass. We got just a glimpse of Lando. Uh huh. And a chess awesome. man that is uh, performing a lot of deep fakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got some dialogue from Chewie. Uh huh. We got R2 and C3PO squabbling. <laughs> yep. And now we got some action. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we have a nice cliffhanger at the end. Yeah. Yeah. I hope this all pays off. Yeah. It honestly was a really cool cliffhanger. I was like, yeah, I didn't expect this. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and now we'll cut to Mara Jade and Talon Card <laughs> watching from a distance. <laughs> or cut to something entirely different that we don't even know of yet. <laughs> Yeah, and now for something completely different. <laughs> yes, yeah. next chapter is the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise. <laughs> People didn't know that Timothy Zahn came up with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this has been the Lost Holocron. You can find transcripts, links to discussion, and more at our website, lostholocron.com. While you're there, you can learn how to support the creation of future episodes. Read on, and we'll be waiting for you in the next transmission. We would be honored if you would join us.